You're on. Monday, December 11th, Top and Borough Selectman's meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no public input. We have no minutes. <laughs> we have no public. <laughs> we have no public. We can move right into our uh, building monthly update for our codes officer. He'll be along in a minute. Oh my gosh, my pen is not working. So we probably need to wait four hours to wait for most everything else. Do that Yes. Come here. That would be the case. Here's our codes officer. Good morning. Good morning. 119 building permits, 35 new houses, and done 790 inspections. Wow. In the basement, there's a lot of boxes and junk. I mean, some of it's police, they, you know, armored vests, throw a box on the floor and leave it there. Foam for packing and stuff, so I don't know. When they have, when they bring it out and throw it away, or, Talk to him and see if it's junk or not, or yeah. it's just like throw in the middle of the floor. Oh, like oh. the office, like the office, like the police station. <laughs> yeah, I got I'm it. just down there moving stuff because I, you know, take the bubblers out and snowman out. And all right, so in the, in the area of general housekeeping, yes, I would recommend that you check with him, and if all it's right. not going to be useful, then let's dispose of it. Okay. Uh, other things that you might find. Who knows? But uh, at yeah. any point in time. And there's, a, and there's a lot of old computers down there. So we have lakes region together and take, yeah. I, mean, I can take the hard drives out of them and give them to them, but it's up to them. If they want them. They usually dispose of the hard drives, the cases we throw away. Definitely on that. I can pull them yep. out, so I just. Uh, well, when you have time. Trash. Yeah. Hopefully things will slow down a little bit this winter. You never know. Yeah. Good. Great. Anything more for Jack? So Jack and I had briefly discussed on Friday, maybe do a quick audit of values so that our fees are commensurate with mm -hmm. what people are putting out. I mean, some of them are kind of less expensive, some more expensive, but I thought maybe we could look at what our assessors putting on things. The theory being that the fees should pay for the office. I mean, that's big. Right. It's, it's pretty close, but just to keep an eye on it. Well, if we need minor adjustments, that'd be the thing to do. But yeah, I see no issue with that. It's, just, it's just hard to figure. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it would be. It's a, you know, it would be. A formula right. there. I mean, this build is going to charge $500 a square foot, and this right. is going to charge $300 a square foot. Right. Well, as I know, a lot of that, the fit and finish has a lot to do with this. Certainly, yeah. Whether it's paint or whether it's you know clear yeah. cherry mahogany, yeah, yeah. what goes on. So, yeah. but like with everything yeah. else, if you take twenty examples or right. maybe thirty-five examples, right. get a, you're going to get an average. Yeah. So I know Malton Bros. Going to they're looking at this because they actually called me up and asked me how I got yeah. some of mine. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Hopefully we'll run out of house slots soon. Someday. Uh, any trends that we might be of interest? Okay. Bigger houses, smaller houses, uh, everything. Yeah. They're not smaller, put it that way. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while you get a little one, you know, yeah. like I had one the other day, it's a one bedroom. Yeah. You know, it's just a fill in lot in um, Hidden Valley, but they're good sized houses and there's no families. Yeah, that's the problem. So middle aged to older and there's no families. Huh. Yeah. All right. So the concern remains that we'll lose our school at some point in time because we're not having kids. It's under a hundred now. Yeah. Okay. My son's age coming through. He didn't go there, but his age coming through. There was two full classes. Right. And now I heard kindergarten was like seven kids. Yeah. Is, is, is he got anybody watches this on television? What? 
Does anybody watch this thing on television? Does me? Yeah. On YouTube. Because I, uh, I was going to say, right here, I, yeah, I was going to say, maybe we should declare ourselves an asylum town and get some people in here with kids. There was 139 views on the last meeting. Oh my God. If I'm not in it, I watch it. Because we're from Nike. I don't know what might happen. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. All right. I encourage the public right. to watch the meetings. and. Uh, and by all means, come in for public input if you got something to say. Right. We make decisions uh, based on information we're given and opinions, and if we don't get anything, we're on our own. And uh, right. that's how it works. So we see on this agenda, the Chief's coming in. Supposed to be. Well, scoot in and ask him the question. Let's jump in. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So much for codes. Our next appointment should be a non-public session at 9.15, but we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, uh, we have a holiday schedule proposal that we need Selectman Murray for, who will be here all the late. We have a letter from some folks regarding taxes in our action items. Uh, again, we should wait for Selectman Murray. They were unaware that the property they bought had back taxes on it, and uh, they didn't pay the interest on the, on the back taxes, and they'd like us to waive that. We have a letter from Chief Thompson about damage that was done at the... Uh, How much money are we talking about on that last one? $40. $42.28. Uh, again, we have the library report. Uh, we have a Board of Adjustment variance that was granted and a temporary discharge permit, a copy of it that was sent to the state out of North Country Village. And we'll, we can look at all that. And selections updates, which we can probably discuss a little bit. I have nothing since the last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I spent a significant amount of time here on the police budget uh -huh. and the highway budget on Friday. Right. So I feel like I'm prepared. I don't know what, um, I know that the chief made some adjustments. Chief of police made some adjustments because he had made some mistakes on his. Um, and other than that, I did um, correspond with Rob Rorison from the Budget Committee with regard to the solar. His query was whether or not we could get whoever we contract with to wait and get their one third or 30% payment, which is the federal rebate, mm -hmm. when we get it. And I'll certainly ask, but uh, I'm not certain that's it. Yeah, I'd be real tentative about thinking that might happen. Well, I don't want to drive in the price, and that might happen. Right. So, um, huh. We haven't heard back from anybody else, have we? Mm -mm. No. Because we have a couple other companies. That right, we did get some other interest in. Right. There was some pricing that was there that seemed a little bit out of whack to me. Well, and sometimes it was not apples to apples. Right. They were, what they were proposing wasn't exactly what yeah. we were even looking for. Right. Um, and you and I discussed briefly the proposed warrant. Mm -hmm. Thinking about it, I didn't. I didn't include the the hundred thousand dollars that um, Lake is looking for. But yes. We would, to, we would have to put that on the warrant. Right. And uh, Steve Scapiccio is coming in to talk about that right. and the purchase of the Calvin property. So he'll be along at 9.30. Right. Meanwhile, we're waiting to go down public. It's an interesting morning already. Yeah. <laughs> I did uh, on the street have chats with some people about the Central Park question. And, you know, not a big cross section of voters, but the general feeling was it seems to be going in five different directions at once. And maybe what we need to do is throw 20 grand at it to come up with a, or 10 grand or whatever, to come up with a plan. You know, they, they need to have their ducks in a row for one right. thing. It's right. very disjointed. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, you know, people have commented, and I know you dislike social media, but it's a way to find out what people are thinking a lot of times, that, that this whole pro that all this stuff would come together all at once in one giant Warren article, and there's going to be maintenance and whatever, but it certainly isn't the case. Yeah, it's not, and I'm not certain the decision for media. No, it's, it's, they had a meeting, they threw out ideas, and I think a lot of it was mis misconstrued. Right, and a lot of, um, you know, like paving the trails, I and mean, what, what is that all about? I mean, they're, Wolfboro's walking trails aren't paved, and they're, yeah. they have old people with ski poles walking. Right. So it's, they're not lit. So if you're just looking for examples, that's one. And I'm not certain lighting the trails is. I mean, I'm not in favor of more light pollution anyway. But we're a headlamp if you can go out there at night or whatever. It just doesn't seem advisable to me to go hiking out there at night, knowing the area like I do, and uh, why? Why anyone would? I don't know. I don't either. We don't. As we've talked already, our population is aging rapidly and new, new children aren't coming into town. Right. And uh, right. our, our fire rescue department could be out there, God knows what hour, picking somebody up or doing something, but there's nothing to stop them right now from going out at night. Well, I can appreciate doing something user-oriented to maybe attract people to live in Tuftonboro, but it's... Yeah, at this point, well, we need to. Here we are. Here we are. I was looking uh, very dim on our non-public. I heard a truck pull in. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. You want to make a motion to go in? Well, we're gonna give it a minute. No. This white pickup out there. No. Didn't. That's a ram. Okay. Well, then I think I should call a recess until we have uh, Selectman Murray here. Or until yeah. Steve Scapiccio comes in, unless you want to discuss other things. No, I'm pretty well spent. <laughs> All right, then I'll call a, a temporary recess at, at 9.15. You're right, on. Re reconvening the Selectman's meeting here on Monday, <laughs> December 11th. We have Steve Scapiccio to speak about Merrill Lake and purchase of some property. So I'm back to talk about what we're doing and whether we're going to do a warrant article for the Merrill Lake. Uh, we kind of left it up in the air. You guys wanted more information. We put it all together for you. You all should have got one of these packets that had everything in it. Yep, they did. So, uh, and now we're getting down to the point where we're going to start making up warrant articles. So Definitely. we had some sample warrant articles in there as well. So just kind of wanted to touch base with you on and there were examples in that packet of yes. towns that have done this yes there were, were there sample contracts yeah there were examples of the town there were uh, sample warrant articles um, the whole history of the mirror lake what we've done the first the first go through and you know the second one now that we're going through for the next watershed management plan so it's all in there. And who are we billing the interest to? Uh, Merrill Lake Protection Association. Okay. And the rate is whatever we decide it's going to be, or is it a set rate? It's a set rate by the state. Okay. So the because state it's control. their it's their money too. It's their money. It's you know. It's their money except for we're borrowing it. Yep. Well, Banks loan money too. Some portion of it's our money. <laughs> yeah, no, all of it is our money. It's just we have to borrow it back. I guess I'm, I, I guess I'm fine with it. I, I don't like this setup, but there's nothing we can do. Well, the track record as presented in the pack has been good. Nobody's defaulted on it. The state has. I mean, it's all right. all been successful. Right. Which tends to make me think that we can be successful too. In, in Mirror Lake, actually, the MLPA went through that ten-year, the other, the first, the Geosyntec, the Geosyntec plan, yes. and we finished everything that was on that plan except for a community septic system, which 
would be impossible. The problem I have with it is that you've got a great pond, which is under the control of the state, the ownership of the state in their mind, and yet they don't want to grant funds to keep it in a good state of being. They want us to borrow money from them to do it, and then they're going to pay us back if we do the job. I mean, it has any, every number of elements that bother Chip, but nothing I can say is going to change that. So, I, you know, I, I think we could just, we're, we're not up to war in articles yet, but we're getting close. Yeah, well, that's why I so want I think we'll, uh, I'm pretty sure we can we can do it. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that we will do it. But again, if we don't have Bob here either. But yeah, it's uh, it seems workable enough. It's like Chip says. Uh, <coughs> there's a lot of conditions on it, so to speak. Just like any grant would be. It's not necessarily a grant per right. se. But if it were a grant, I'd be okay with it. Right. But it's you know, yeah. but it's like everything else gets moving. It's a lot of external government. Right. It's like the the FDA money on the uh, police station. Police station. I mean, they seem to control that project, even though they don't put a nickel in until we spend all of our money. Right. So they're really not a player. They're only picking up the slack at the end. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not, I don't like that either, but what are we going to do? But I think we can pick through the war articles that you've created or gather, yep, right. yeah, yeah. find the one that yeah. most fits the situation, maybe even modify it a little bit if we need to, but yeah, <laughs> I think it'll work. And the upside is if they actually do pay us back, which I certainly hope they do, that right. increases our revenue for next year. To the sure. And and as we know, uh, much like 19 Mile Brook, Mirror Lake feeds into Lake Winnipesaukee as well. Right. So everything we can do to keep our tributary waters uh, contributors there clean is, is good. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, literally into Winter Harbor. Right, right there. <laughs> right there. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not far A few away. hundred feet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yes, yeah. it does. I think it, you can... Uh, and, you know, and, and then the loan is really just the development of the plant. So, I mean, we have no problem with doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've already hired an FBE to do that. So, and they have a great track record. We've been working with them now for three years. So, um, and they have a great, so as far as what we told them that we were going to do, we have no, we're no concern about not being able to finish that so that, that, project would be complete. It's not like we have to complete what we say we're going to in that 10-year plan. We just have to create that 10-year plan. Right. So it's even... All right. Yep. And you had some talk of, or comments about the Carlton property? Yeah. Okay. You want to talk about? So, well, yeah, I was hoping that I'd have actually have the appraisal back. Um, I just called them again this morning saying, where is it? They were pushed out a week so originally we were supposed to go out there and do the appraisal the week before she did it, uh, but then she got sick and they got COVID running through their office, so they, they postponed it a week, so I haven't heard back. But I'm not anticipating too much of a problem with that. I mean, I think at, at the worst case scenario, we'll, we'll be a few thousand dollars off. Um, you know, the, the challenge with that piece of property, other than 80% of it's underwater, is that it's... Uh, Landlocked. So there's no real way to get to that property. Well, it's from the back half. It's it's continuous with the transfer station property, so it's not really landlocked. For us, it's not landlocked. Right. For anybody else, it's landlocked. Well, if Carlton sold it with the pit that he's selling, it's part of that, which is yep. connected to 171. Yep. So, yeah, but when he breaks it apart, yeah. when you break it apart, that's what I'm talking about, right. Chip. So when you break it apart, you know, uh, the way that he wants to do it, they have the whole back of that lot. Yeah. Even if they didn't break it apart, I mean, truly, uh, the only place there could be any gravel, we looked at that. And, you know, I went out there with Rick Vanderpool mm -hmm. as well, and the only place there's potential for gravel is way down here on the other side of the. Uh, right. They were going to be looking for access over the transfer. Yeah. Property, which wasn't going to happen. Yeah. So, you know, it's, 
Is it she, you know, when I was out there with the appraiser, she said it's going to be pretty tough to find a comparable piece of property to this because yes. of how it's located and it's, right. it's so much water on it. What it is. What it is. Yeah. So that was her only concern, is being able to find comparables, two more comparables to this. And I haven't heard, I did call them this morning and say, hey, where is it? And I haven't heard back. So, but we are working on that. And I did go out there with Rick. And, you know, again, he said one of the biggest values of the town is its location to the right. covered over. And you, does conservation have anything else you're going to be looking for a water? Uh, no. As far as I know, not. We have, we're looking at the Williams property as well, but we're pretty, pretty confident that we can get 100% funding between LCHIP and ARM. And we're actually looking at, um, <coughs> so the people from the ARM fund um, suggested that we make that a special project uh, and make it a, uh, a project so that they can use it as a demo of what we can do with the land, in which case we're, uh, Rick is meeting with the Army Corps of Engineers this week to see if they can get that designation, which actually releases a lot more funds that we can do with that property. So we're pretty optimistic that we can get 100% funding for that property between LCHIP and ARM and maybe even do a little better with the Army Corps if we can get it designated as a special project. And how many acres is that? 83, I think. So. Yeah. Depending on who you talk to, it's either 83 or 85, somewhere around there. It's a big chunk. It's a big chunk. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's a tributary into the Melvin River. Coming down the back side of it, there's a stream that actually flows down into the uh, Melvin River. That's, yeah. that's good for uh, one of the values of it, as far as there's concerned, is that it's good for brook trout and it's uh, habitat for that. So we're pretty excited about doing that. So. Those are the only two pieces of property we're looking at right now. And, the, and it may have just been a rumor, but the, the Hersey property off the Dame Road, that that was going to come on the market. Yeah, I haven't heard that. So I, but certainly, I don't know where that property is off the of Dame Road. I know he has that, it's, that piece of property that runs from Sodom Road kind of all the way up to the property we already own. No, this is from... This side of Old Woods Road, on the left, right. there's two, if we're going in from this side, yeah. there's two lots of record, one at 90 something acres or 100 acres, and the other one five or six acres. All right, it's inside what I'll call the circle of Dame Road, not on the outside of it. Okay. That's, you know, by Hackles and on that side of the road? That's the one I'm thinking of. Okay. And that's not the one I'm thinking of. Okay. Well, I'll have to look at the back. I'll have to look at it and see. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. I, know. I, I don't know. If, I mean, I would hope that the town would get approached if it does come on the market. I certainly can have Rick send a note out to John. He's worked with John before and say, yeah. hey, if you guys are interested, you know, if you're thinking about putting that on, 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 on sale. The town would like to have for a shot at it. Or a look at it. A look at it, yeah. yeah. Good point out. You know, I'll they know it's all in current use. So it's going to be, that just put the stumbling block of the selling it commercially. It doesn't prevent it from happening. No. Yeah. I, I know that the, some of the property out there, they have been approached by a solar company. Uh, they were insulted by the offer that was made. All right, good. Um, I think you can, uh, you can have some pretty confident feelings about Maryland. Okay, I'll let Kathy know. <coughs> the other question that I have for you, the other thing I had on my list was 19 mile book. We decided what we're doing with that. Well, we contacted our um, attorney with our proposals for both of uh, and Wolfboro's, and actually, the you know, DES is kind of summarily rejected as everything we've asked. So, we have a, an option of either hoping that they test 
or I'm waiting for a lawsuit or okay. I'm going to test it. I, I guess that's one question. You know, uh, if we're not going to do it, I'd like to, you know, FB Environmental is kind of holding spot open. Mm -hmm. well, we haven't got the report back from this year. Well, they won't, you won't have it until February. So way too late, sir. Yeah, that was, that was, you know, I want to get stuck in the end of getting the report back and then say, hey, yeah, let's go forward with it. And we're past the point where you can right. have a warrant article. So, um, I'm still looking at $35,000. But whatever was in that proposal, yeah, yeah. it hasn't changed. So I just want to make sure that we, we, <coughs> we think about what we want to do with that so right. that we can Well, if you get the results of the testing, it will be a lot easier. So if I ask the week of February, I have no idea. Because we just did our last round two weeks ago. And we have to wait for the labs to come back. I mean, it's not there just... Are computers in this world now. <laughs> I don't know, Chip, I'm just... It just makes it difficult. It, I mean, if it came back and everything's absolutely wonderful and Wolfboro wasn't going to increase their flow by 200%, maybe we wouldn't spend a nickel. But if it doesn't come back wonderful and they're going to increase their flow, then we have to really consider what we're... Yeah. We're going to so I know that the last uh, bit of letter that I got from DES because they're capping them at what their current limits are. Oh, so that, I didn't hear that. Yeah, I, I think I reported that, but so they are, it would have been weeks ago. Yeah, it was weeks ago, yes. Yeah. So the la last letter from DES saying they renewed their license yeah. and that they're capping them at their current levels, Okay. which is 350,000 gallons. Uh, well, actually, I think it was 420, but their current daily level that they're outputting is 350. Thousand gallons. Thousand gallons, yes. Oh. A day. Right. <laughs> Rust pond every nine months. Yes. So that was is what the, they renewed the license for. Okay. And you know what we have to be careful of, and here's a caveat with the testing that we did, right? So we were really lucky that when we started that testing they had the RIB shut down. So we got a good year of solid information year one with no, nothing going into 19 Mile Brook. Right. Year two, which was last year, was a very dry year. So we got, so now we had a base with nothing. We had a dry year. Now this year we had a wet year. Right. So we're kind of really lucky in the way that things have played out that we can see the evolution of what's happening from the RIBs over the last three years. Right. And I think one of the concerns that, that we had as a group of the last year's testing was the increase in the chloride levels down low. And that was on a dry year, so we're really anxious to see what happens this year. But I just wanted to put it out there that you know uh, we should make some kind of a decision so that going into the town meeting we have a plan. And you know, if you don't use the funds, you're better off than not having something there that you can use if you yeah, and I suppose what we could look at is is funding the thirty five thousand and then going back to the testing company and once we get the results and say, Okay, let's tailor this a little more so we're not spending thirty five thousand. Absolutely, absolutely we can do that, Chip. We can we can say, look, here depending based on what your uh, report says, this is the area that we should focus on. Let's let's challenge that and let's get right. that down to focusing on that area right. but I, I did want to bring it up so that if we're going to do something that we're prepared to do that yeah I'm in agreement yeah. our work just keep, keep growing and growing of course they do the town keeps growing and growing in some respects yeah. <coughs> and shrinking in others getting more complicated yes all right and the only other thing that I do do want to, I did walk the trails behind uh, the fire station. I mean, there was Central a question, Park. Central Park. Yeah. There was a question about whether there was wet areas up there that would have to be dealt with. And we did walk it. There is one wet area that's up towards the back of the red trail. It's kind of a, a swampy area and the soil type does register as a wet wetland. So if they were doing anything there, they would have to either 
put some kind of a boardwalk across here or a bridge to uh, encompass that one area. Other than that, there's a vernal pool that's not on the trail at all, so pretty much wet areas are not a concern up in the back there. And that would uh, fall under permit by notification? Yeah, PB, depending on what they did. So if they wanted to do a bridge or fill it, then it would be a minimal impact permit. If they wanted to just put a boardwalk across it, then it would be a PBM, yes. Very good. That's it. Thank you very much. No problem, guys. Next up, we have our highway department monthly update. I'm pretty sure we could talk about the budget. <coughs> Come on up, Jim. You haven't had to plow this storm. Today, you mean? <laughs> Since the heavy rainstorms were this year, put us over budget. And we've also been working on uh, marking out uh, plow hazards with putting up stakes and ribbons. And uh, we've been cutting back some of the low hanging limbs that hang into the roads. You notice it when the snow hits it, and then you go by in a big truck and it's flopping off the windshield or the mirror. So we're trying to cut some of those back. There's still quite a bit to go, but we've got a the, the bulk of the uh, worst ones down in the And that's so we have for the update for this one. So, um, let's take a look here. Other than we did have a, a problem with the new town truck already, but they, they covered it. Um, I was sanding with it the last storm, and I got halfway up Ledge Hill and just stopped sanding. So I got out and looked, and the track wasn't spinning. The spinner was, but the track wasn't. So we had to do some testing and everything and figured out that uh, it was a hydraulic pump seized up. You could put it in your hand and hit it and you could feel it move, but it wouldn't spin. Oh. So we so called- it wasn't the truck, it was the same. No, yeah, correct. So we called Viking, which is the company that installed the body, and they overnighted us a new one. And we just, we got it in and it works fine. So we just got to send the old one back at this point. Frustrating that that didn't even last 10 hours, you know, it's the quality of stuff that they not like it used to be. Well, at least you can find the parts. Yes, you're right. Probably two years ago we wouldn't have been right. at that part. So, <laughs> so right now you're $92,000 over budget. I won't use the term upside down because my town administrator finds that a, a curious way to talk. So. Uh. I'm going to say you're 92000 over budget. Yep. Do we have any other, we don't have any other revenue sources coming in on that? No. Okay. So you spent $771,475. You're going to be well over $800,000 before the year comes to a close. Yep, probably 800000 over. Yeah, easily more than one hundred. Which reminds me of 2015, maybe. Was it? I don't yeah. know. One year we had 120 oh. over. Yeah, we were over. I remember that was probably the year we had that major storm damage again. A couple, yeah. You know, right. We're just not prepared when we get these big storm damages for funding it. There's no, we had no budget line for storm damage, right. unfortunately. I don't know how you want to handle that this year. 
if that's, you know, we talked about it a little bit, but there's quite a few ideas. Out there. Well, when you, when you say, um, what's this put? when you say storm damage ran that budget over, or this current year over, what dollar figure are you putting on there? Under grand? Or? Well, I think I reported to you twice that we had storm damage of, uh, excuse me, $75,000 each time. Right. Um, which, what did, and we weren't able to recover any of that through FEMA? It's not done yet. That's the thing. It's probably not going to happen this year, for sure. Uh, we're still, they, you know, they're still coming back to us asking questions. I don't think they're in a hurry to get it done this year, <laughs> by any means. Um, and the dollar amount that they were talking about was in a somewhere around $65,000, if I remember Well, right. we've added to it since then. Um, and they're not going to pay, they won't pay. 100%. They're, they're looking at, I think, reimbursing us 75%, if I remember correctly. So it won't be 100%. And we've added to the list since then as far as costs. And they told us, you know, they said, hey, as things go on and, and as we're working on it, mm -hmm. we're supposed to put in for our hours. And, uh, and, they, you know. and at the end, we don't know that we are going to get reimbursed. It's no guarantee. You got to remember that every town had damage, and mm -hmm. we don't know how that's going to work out at the end. And what? There's no indication when they're going to let us know. I have not heard about it. Anything? To I mean, at, at the very least, we need to adjust our revenue for next year to that amount, or whatever, mm -hmm. or we just have a surprise in the mail something. I guess. Yeah. So. Um, the chief and Chris Morgan, I think, are the ones that are really dealing with okay. FEMA. That's kind of where it lies with them. Right. Uh, I did. I met with Chris Morgan, and we did our ride around because we had a GPS points of where the damage started, where it stopped, and there was, there was a gap. We had to you know, start again and stop. They wanted GPS points for all that, which we get. You know, we have. They have it now, and. Uh, the questions just keep rolling in on a regular basis from what I understand. Okay. Well, looking at the budget, or well, the proposed budget, I got real issues. When I look at winter, spring, summer, and fall maintenance, all those items to date have been overspent considerably, but you're not asking for a whole increase of any great amount in any of those on this budget. And it seems to me that if we've spent so much, for example, winter already, and you're only asking for a $10,000 increase. Um, well, it seems that every, every year when I ask for an increase, I get cut. <laughs> that's okay. That's not but, true. But I'm not, I'm well, thinking that you yeah, haven't asked for nearly enough. Up, upside down, I use the term. Yes. And we blew your budget up to make sure we didn't go there again. So it isn't like every year you come in and we cut your budget. No, you don't. But when I, especially in spring and fall, it gets cut. I ask for more and then it gets cut. So I thought I'd just try to be light on it and see if we can't slide it through. Well, <laughs> summer maintenance, you've spent double, basically. Uh, yeah, but that's where the storm damage came into most of that. I know, but we could have storm damage again next year and we don't get the FEMA grants until way late and it goes in the general fund. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you more money, not less. Okay, I personally. That. Okay, now when we start looking at the numbers, okay, summer maintenance, the budget was 85, you spent 168.5, as you said, because of that, but you're only asking for 90. That seems a little thin to me. Winter maintenance, we had budgeted 310, so far we spent 330. Um, yes, 330, and you're only asking for 320. Uh, that's less than what you spent. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me. I think we need to be boosting these numbers, and I'll, I'll uh, have my other selectmen look at these. But uh, I appreciate you trying to be conservative. Yeah, I like it, but on the other hand, <clears throat> don't cut your own throat. Or I should say the town's own throat. Yeah, and, you know, with the because you've got, got very reasonable things. requests on other things. We, we can't predict these storms. I know, that's why I think we need to put more money in. Okay, well, I'm going to go with whatever you guys would like to do. I'd, 
that's just my opinion. I'm going to, like I said, I'll, we'll have the other guys weigh in. But again, everything else I see, your fuel is down, which makes sense. Fuel prices are dropping. Well, the biggest problem I had was the old town truck was breaking down. We didn't get to use it okay. as much as we needed to. It, that could have been used a lot more, and I suspect that the new truck will be used a lot more. You know, so it, I don't think I've cut that just yet. <laughs> well, you did. I did. Well, well according to this budget request, cut the ask by twenty five hundred bucks. Right. To fifteen thousand, which is a, a realistic number, I think. I mean, it's twice as what. Twice as much money as, as you spent this year on fuel. Okay. Well, let's assume we use a truck twice as much, so yeah. we're going to have to spend more money on fuel. Sure, that, but that's reasonable. Uh, again, yeah. what I see here, everything except for the, the different seasons maintenance is, is either a little <coughs> down or a little up. Uh, not bad. Tree removal is up 15000 but that's expensive work, and that price doesn't go down, and there's a lot of it needs to be done. It's actually, yeah. we're falling behind on that. It just, doesn't surprise me. Yeah, because um, the trees are just dying faster than we can keep up with it. But a lot of this is just real nice. I just think we got to do better on the different season maintenance. Crack ceiling, it looks like you're going to try to do some catch up. We're going to need to. This year? Cause I need to, to buy do, that. It didn't get done this year, essentially. It didn't, and we still need to buy a piece of equipment. So you've got two so years worth of crack sealing to do in 2024. It'll like, be the same year. What, what you wanted to do last year plus anything else is coming. Anything else. The fifth, I'm sorry, fifteen thousand dollars includes the purchase of equipment. We're going to start with one because we don't know how good it is. But they have this new thing that I want to try, and it looks like it's small that you can push around. It heats up and it dumps the, you know. The, blue, the sealer in as you drive it around. Push it. You see, it's not like it's electric or anything, but um, yes, you can push it around, and I think that's going to work good. If it does, then maybe the following year we need to think about getting two, you know, mm -hmm. to cut the time down. Do you have a portable air compressor? We use you know, backpack blower. Is that enough to blow the sand oh, yeah. out of the cracks? That works extremely well. You, have, you, know, like you don't need high pressure air to blow the cracks out? The backpack blow is real efficient. Works well. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see his numbers closer for summer maintenance and winter maintenance to his actuals for 2023. You want to start with summer maintenance? I think that's more realistic. So that's actually a cut. Oh, actual. That's yeah, actual. Actually, yeah. So I don't have the actual in front of me at the moment. So we have year to date. Summer maintenance? Okay. I don't have that with me. It's moment. okay. We have yeah. right here. Year to date is in bed. And, and summer and, and spring are done. Well, so hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> you spent summer 168, 160 for summer maintenance budgeted $90,000. I would think that $150,000 would be a good number to put in here. Even though it's less than the actual, I'm hoping that uh, we have a little better summer. We have, we don't get the downpours. Yeah, I'm thinking everybody wants that. Yeah. That kind of works some of this year for us. And uh, the same with the winter maintenance. Winter maintenance. You spent $330,000. So far. So far. We got another. Well, we got December to, to get through. Three weeks. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Three weeks. Um, so, summer and winter together. We're at. And, and to also bring up to date, they have raised the price of salt right. this year. Lovely. So, salt and sand have both gone up. Thing. So $500,000 is what he spent this year, and he's asking for $410,000. And I 
how much of that 500,000 on summer and winter maintenance was involved in this storm damage stuff? Uh, some of it was because if you remember correctly, December 23rd last year, we had a right. snow, heavy snow and then rain. And I think I reported to you we had at least $75,000 worth of damage. But that would have been in 2022, right? Correct. But the work, we got some of the work done <coughs> before Excuse the me. new year, before, oh, okay. and, and some of the work got done after the fact. So some of it was, you know, related to the damage that had occurred in 2022. And what were you at, by I'm sorry. You did propose at some point. Well, I suggested uh, for summer maintenance that it be approaching his actual. The actual is 168,519. Right. I was suggesting 150. And winter maintenance with three weeks left. He spent three hundred and thirty thousand five thirty eight. And your proposed number there would be I don't know, 350. So 500,000, which is what he spent last year. Yeah, you know, this year. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got spring. Did you, is that spring or summer? 53, two, I did summer and winter. Okay. So spring is at 50,000. He spent 53,000 this year. And no. 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 108,000. Oh, I'm sorry, I had to fall. I'm sorry. Oh, There's bound to be some carryover from winter damage and things that runs into spring just because time marches on no matter how fast we work, right? Correct. Sometimes they do overlap a little bit. You know, we also have gravel costs that have gone. So your total budget spent for this year, winter, spring, fall, and summer was six hundred forty thousand eight hundred twenty seven dollars and the proposed budget before we do Bob's upgrades is five hundred and ten thousand so we're hundred and thirty one thousand dollars upside down there if you want to work it all four together as opposed to trying to parse it out individually so if we add well when we when this is presented to the budget committee they're going to look at it line by line so we right, kind of have we, to, can, we can break it out i just want to yeah. give you a holistic view of it i mean you've got Ooh. added sixty thousand dollars to summer and another twenty thousand so you got eighty thousand of that 130. well when we look at bottom line year to date is uh, 771 and change and there's still three weeks left to go so you, we got to increase the bottom line somehow, and then, like you say, we can break it out. But we got to get up to something that might actually come close to what's going to get spent next year. I mean, it's a tough one, again. But I, the, your numbers, although you're trying to be nice, is uh, we got to we got to boost those. You know. And again, the smaller stuff is real reasonable, in my opinion. back up to where he's spending his spending level this year we had to have to add thirty six thousand dollars to some line here could you split it between spring and fall maintenance maybe yeah I mean, that's what we want to do so make spring 80 and at least fall at 50. And that would 
but it pretty close. Sixty-five and sixty-five. What would that do for us? And um, just looking at the budget. Jim's been pretty frugal with, with his line. I'm sure in anticipation of putting a lot more time in the winter maintenance. Yes. But I'm really impressed with what I see today. Thank you. Hopefully in the next three weeks we won't ever that too bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, this week looks okay. We, we, so far. We dodged a storm today. The original was saying snow. Right. And now they're not. We'll go right down through this before we're done, mm -hmm. and uh, so that I can not mark up my sheet so I can't read it anymore. But yeah, we got to get you up where you can have a fighting chance. With spring, That's it. spring, <clears throat> we can go to seventy-five, and fall sixty-five. That's a forty thousand dollar increase between those two. Spent fifty three only, only with forty one appropriated. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but your number seems to be reasonable on that. Capture on both of them, as far as I can see. Seven seventy two plus four seven seventy eight is what I got, and that's at sixty five and sixty five. And what did you want to do? Bob, I'm sorry, I'm not. Uh, on spring, 75. So 10. And fall, 65. So add 10. So 770. <coughs> 782. No, spring you'd be adding 25. No, I'm adding from the number I had. Probably don't no. spell this anymore. <laughs> Okay, so I came up with 778, and you want to add $10,000 to that. So 788, bottom line. That pushes the summer to 150, the winter to 350. Um, eight, 75 on spring and 65. Yeah, on fall. Uh, the fall maintenance might be a little large. 65 may be too much. Keep in mind, I, I didn't actually do all the grading this year because the budget is mm -hmm. in such bad shape. Uh, we only did the worst few roads and not all of them like we normally do. That is a yeah, fourteen percent increase. Do you have a a suggestion for for, for the fall maintenance number? I think sixty. I think yeah. I'm asking you. I think sixty five might be a little rich. He spent 53, 268, 50, so, 55, actually might be more reasonable. I'm going to go back down to 778.
fifteen to percent. Now we're down to thirteen percent. But we're I don't know where we are over now, we're hundred thousand dollars over. So we're at, we're hundred and thirteen percent currently, right? So we're funding at our current expense level. Yes. If we add thirteen percent to the budget. <clears throat> Do we need to go through every line? Who's taking notes anyway? Well yeah, the one thing I guess I, I'm writing down the four seasons that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Are we thinking about keeping the the rest of them um, at my my request? Let's just go through it. It's not that not going to take that long. You're not asking for any more money on your line in the budget. No. I would garage telephone is the same as the 23 budget. Summer maintenance up to 150. Winter oh, maintenance oh, to 150. 150 right. Yes, from 90. Winter maintenance up to 350 from 320. Road prep and repair is out because it's in the warrant article. I'd, I'd like to keep a hundred dollars in there if we could, just so the as a placeholder. Yeah, just okay. Well, money. then you're going to have to adjust that number. But okay, we'll we'll keep that hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Fuel, you've actually come down twenty-five hundred dollars at fifteen hundred uh, thousand, rather, and we think that's okay for the moment. Highway maintenance, you're asking for exactly the same, twenty thousand. General expenses, you're asking for the same, thirty-five hundred. Catch basins, you're asking the same, seventy-five hundred. Roadside mowing is down. It was thirty thousand this year. You're asking for twenty-five hundred next year. We have a contract on that, and you have a contract on it. Yeah. Culverts, you're going up a thousand dollars from three thousand to four thousand. That makes sense. It's culvert work that needs to be done, I'm sure. And the culvert pricing has gone up a lot. There you go. Tree removal, we're way behind. You're actually act going from thirty-five thousand to fifty thousand in an effort to try to catch up. If we can get anybody to do it, which is always problematic, but well, it's actually happening. We're getting yeah, it all done. You got some good. Yeah, Apron paving is exactly the same. Fifteen thousand. Road striping is exactly the same at twenty thousand. Yeah. Crack ceiling. You're going up from ten to fifteen thousand. If you you've explained why. Spring maintenance. We have actually increased from the. Forty-five thousand in the twenty-three budget to seventy-five thousand, and we added to your budget request of fifty thousand. So seventy-five is the final number. Fall maintenance once again it was at forty-one for twenty-three. You asked for fifty. We boosted it to fifty-five. Sixty-five, I thought it was. I I came, back down down. came back down to fifty-five. 55. <clears throat> so 55. And then sign replacement was at four thousand in the budget, and you've asked for four thousand. There's all the line items, and Chip has told it up. But I, I think I messed up on fall. I thought he took it out, and that's what brought it down to the 13. Yeah, it went from 14 percent down to 13. That's sure. Which is to the time that to 10. We can do that 30. again. That's fine. I'm not sure 10 thousand. We'll come up with the total, and uh, other than being. What we feel to be way too conservative on your maintenance, your fall, spring, your seasonal maintenance, uh, you've done a good job myself. But we obviously need lower. Well, there's no way out of it. Seven eighty eight, and then we dropped to the thousand. I'm sorry. Seven seventy eight. Yes. What's your number now? Eight forty one eight. What do you got? 
Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Also, I talked with Doug Madden, uh, the city of Madden too, and he was hoping to have that number to me today for the highway garage edition. He did say he thought, and I, I guess, at 225, mm -hmm. right? he did say, he said, that's one hell of a guess. <laughs> so we're looking at around that number. But the one thing that might not be included in this is the electrical work, and after looking at it, I think we have to remove the electrical panel. And then it's going to be the heating system. Right, we're not heating the floor. It doesn't make any sense. I would heat half the floor. I would heat the floor. I would, I would stick with those uh, radiant panels. You so you have to add a, a couple. So one thing that I was thinking was, you know, I could cut some strips through the old concrete floor, which would take, I could cut those and dig those out, you know, that's a half a day's project. Mm -hmm. All we could do is dig down a little bit further, lay down some, uh, some more foam insulation, styrofoam insulation, and then you could run all the way up and down through the middle of that too. Well, you're not going to get the kind of coverage you need. I mean, how many square feet of floors? Why do you want to heat the floor? Yeah. Because when you open the garage door, the heat is gone. Yeah, and, but we, you know, if you do it, some of these uh, radiant panels, uh, the, the, the radiant, the two heaters that are. I well, always going to keep those two. Yeah, keep those. Yeah, maybe and even add a couple. And then, and then you get you the have same effect. We're heating objects rather than air. Okay. Just heating well, from the top rather than bottom. Certainly bring it down. A lot cheaper to, to install. Well, right? yeah. And and they, and you, you heat them from, with those two heaters. You heat them from the top rather than the bottom. And the primary purpose is 
Just for the whatever's in the bed of the truck, correct? Correct. Yeah. And you're right, it's not going to, those, if that was solely the only heat you had, it was the radiant, that wouldn't help us as far as if you had something frozen right. in the no. back of the truck. No, I mean, I mean, you don't have insulation up in that building. I mean, the building has to be insulated like a house. We did do the ceiling. The yeah. ceiling has been done. We had that last year, and it was. Well, I don't think there's no foam under the cement. Currently. Currently, no, I would get that. So you better just tear them for up. If you're going to do radiant, do it. Yeah, but, but, I, I but maybe we just don't, like you said. I, yeah. I think the We'll get by without it, I'm sure. I just like the idea that the floor is always warm when you shut the door, you still feel the heat. But yeah. like you said, maybe those radiant heaters are going to be fine. My humble opinion is I think the two heaters are the way to go. And you know a lot more about heating than those. And, things. and, um, whether we purchase or have an agreement with the uh, propane company, but uh, you probably need a thousand, fifteen hundred gallon propane tank out there to, to run those heaters. I'm surprised that they run all those little ones. Right. All right. Well, we can revisit let's, the uh, let's get the price from the builder first. Yep. See where we're going with that. Yeah. Give it more consideration. Appreciate your time, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next up, we have Chief Shigari to continue, or at least re restart uh, going over his proposed budget. Mark to revise, but it's exactly the same number. It's just that they change. And, oh, I'm sorry. Put the retention down below it, and I also fixed the mistake that Bob found I made. I don't see any changes at all. That's the new number. Okay, that's the number right here. But this is revised, and it's the same number. This is the one we were working on last week. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right. Doing a step, yes. A three percent, um, three percent cola, mm -hmm. but you have one sixteen nine seventy five. And a step is what I put in. And you're putting in a step. I put everybody in a step mm -hmm. because I was looking at what it's going to take to get a new officer in, and then if they crowd up. A new officer coming in with a few hours of overtime is going to be making more than our officer that's been here 20 years. And that's why I bumped everybody up a little bit because, I mean, there are weeks that I'm not the highest paid person here. I mean, for what it's worth because it doesn't take much for overtime. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why I put the steps in because if we move the, the begin entry officer's salary up, it's going to be crowding out <coughs> everybody else. People have been here for 20 years. That was my logic behind that. Plus, I don't think we had any steps last year either. Yeah, your officers had steps last year. Huh? Your officers had steps last year. Okay. I'm staying correct with them. I'm fallible. I'm human. 
as are we all. So, walk me through the $284,000. You've currently spent $178,000 on officer salary. Because we have had three officers since, since February 1. Right. You've had two officers. Right, two officers, right. 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 So this is adding a third. It's it's filling the open position and adding one in the middle of the year. That's why there's the, oh, the, in the calculations there's seventy something weeks because I did All right. six months for the fifth officer. trying to make it so that it's we don't I'm trying to get to a white place where we don't need to put people on call because that I think is a big drawback because as I said before it's not easy to find people that are gonna be able to afford to move in to this area and putting people on call kind of requires that otherwise you'll have extended response times for call our current policy is you have to live within 25 minutes of the PD and that obviously narrows our, our pool down. I'm trying to make it more desirable and open it to more people. I mean, there are a number of departments in this county that don't take call at all, which is a problem, obviously, for the Sheriff's Department and State Police, because they're not out 24 hours either. But, uh, you know, I left here last Monday because there was a 12-year-old that was uh, expressing suicidal thoughts. I went to deal with that deputy was on their way to Jackson that I knew about where the other one was uh, the other night there was an accident it took state police 25 minutes to get here that's a half hour the fire department's waiting somebody to get here mm -hmm. and then there was a that same night there was a call about a, a vehicle backed up to somebody's house that they saw on their camera it took an hour for a deputy to get there to check on that because um, they're short-staffed or and heading covering a lot of places too so trying to get it so that we're not recovering more and we're having more uh, and that oh. we only do that by attracting people to fill the open slot and trying to get so we don't have people on call as much it's a uh, it, it, the process I have laid out is over two years to get there it's not this year because it's going to take at least six months it takes about seven to eight months actually probably to get somebody still working on their own Right, and my concern is adding adding the money to the budget proactively. I mean, I think that uh, right now you, your two officers are averaging about $92,000 a year salary and overtime. And if you add an officer to that, I, I think you can add one officer to your officer's salary line, but you really need to look at your... Uh, overtime line because if you get another officer on you're not going to have to have 8,000 more hours of overtime and then that's a I'm trying to find so well, Audrey you printed out what, where I'm at 80% increase in overtime Gosh. so we did uh, add an officer last year or we kept an officer yeah, we didn't add anybody for 20 years we did too. We added a third officer when we hired um, Officer we, Gillis. Yeah, Gillis. Gillis quit. Gillis's money stayed on your line. You had the opportunity to okay, fill. We've Gillis's. had four officers for twenty years. Okay, you haven't last year, you didn't the year before. She quit two years ago. Not long after. Okay. Cook quit. Right. Gillis came in. Right. We've had four officers for 20 years. Yeah, I'm fine with four officers. Okay. Or actually three officers. Three officers. And the, and the chief. Okay. Right. But adding two officers is what I'm saying is that I'm having difficulty with. And without doing that, you're not going to have 24-hour coverage to get rid of call. Or we just don't do well, call anymore. You're not doing calls now. Yeah, we are. At the middle of the night, we are. Not much. 
Because you only spent you only spent uh, nine thousand dollars worth of overtime. How else are you covering it? I mean, how else are you paying your officers? I guess that would be a better question. If they're actually going out on call, you're either paying them overtime or you're giving them other time off. Thank you. Is that not how it works? I don't know. You should tell me if I'm wrong. They get paid six dollars an hour while they're on call. Okay. And if they get called out, they get three hours of overtime. So they get money. It's not time off. That was the question. You're paying them additional capital to have, be on call. Yes. All right. So you have $263,319 available <clears throat> for your officers currently. You spent 178 plus 98. So, what's that? You spent $187,000. So, sitting in your budget currently right now is $80,000. And that's not going to cover an additional officer? It should, if you were at 2080 times. So it'll, it'll cover the full, uh, the, 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 the vacant spot. That covers the vacant spot. More than covers <clears> it, <throat> right. Because you, you're talking $65,000 if you start at $30.80. So you still got 20 grand left over for equipment and all the rest of it that you pushed up over here. I mean, I just I, I just see the $284,000 line as being a little bit rich. That's just me, though. There's two other selectmen over there sitting there pondering it. <clears throat> I'm struggling with the... Um with the adding the, the the fifth and the sixth officer, I understand what you want to try to do is to, is the uh, is to get everybody off call and get the full time coverage, twenty four seven three sixty five coverage. But that's a big sell. Mm -hmm. That's a big sell. Well, it's a, and it's a long walk to there. Right? I think we're talking two or three years to make it there. Mm -hmm. If we're lucky, yeah, we can find candidates. That's we know. It's, well, it's tough, real tough. I'm trying to make steps to make it easier though. I do understand. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone else in the state is as well. well so. um, and we're tough to grow. I mean, it's not like... Well, the other reason for the fifth is, you know, we are, by most standards, understaffed at four. In the summertime especially. Uh -huh. You know, we should... If you look at, on a per capita basis, if you will, we have the most people per officer other than I think one town around one or two towns that and then out of the lake I mean that's part of the whole we want to see more officers out there you know we're dealing with other calls uh, you know uh, that's but if you're successful in selling this to us you're gonna to have to stand up the town meeting and sell it to the townspeople too I know that well and the budget committee in between. The budget hearing is where you're going to get a chance to shoot this down. Or the budget committee before that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Retention. Mm -hmm. Who are we planning to retain that needs to be bribed to stay, so to speak, at this point in time? Is anyone threatening to leave that needs to be retained? Or uh, is this something for the future officers we're talking about? Or both? It's kind of both. Okay. I know that the people we have right now have been very loyal to the town for a lot of years. And every one of us could retire this year. Yes. And I fully expect one, if not two, openings this year. Of your current staff? Yes. Then we don't need the $30,000 retention bonus, do we? 
I'm not going to pay somebody to walk out the door. It won't be the well, they won't get it till the end of the year. If they stay, it won't be there. They won't that, get it. It's, it's, it's coercion. I'm all, I'm all for longevity. We pay everybody for right. longevity, but an additional... Uh, well, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm looking at... So the state is saying... We're paying, here's the thing about it, rather than adding it to the salary line. Like this, the state is advertising we pay 72000 uncertified walking in the door. But that, they're only paying overtime though on the lower rate. They're not giving you the higher rate. At ten thousand, you got to stay there for the year. You got to be successful. And all the overtime during the year is on the lower rate. Well, so it's really not retention. It's more of a sign-on bonus. Well, it's, it's just they call it they call it a retention sign-on. Yeah. Well, it's the, both. I mean, the state in their infinite wisdom uses terms that are well, they, they sometimes do, a bit ridiculous, but they do both. The state mm -hmm. has done both. Yep. I mean, it, it's no different than us sitting here and saying, okay, how about if we allow a $10,000 per officer retention bonus, mm -hmm. and it's our idea, and for that, they're going to give us a five-year commitment. What's the difference? The difference is that I'm coercing them. When I have to look at a $30,000 line item where there's no benefit beyond December 31st, then I'm getting coerced. That's the way I look at it. I'm in agreement. It's, it's, it's for the year, and that's what the state has done. That's what have, a lot of yeah. places have done something like that. Right. It's to make it more attractive to come here. It's to, and to and stay. they're not having much luck at the state. They are. They're hiring people. They're losing them on the other end, though. That's the problem. Right. Well, I mean, they're at least a... Get so, bodies back in. They just I mean, the ten new troopers. The point is not to have a face here for twelve months. I mean, that's not the point. I get that. Manchester just swore in like eight new officers. State is sworn in ten. I mean, but, it's, but they're not. They're not. But they have a bunch that are leaving on the other end. Right. It's a different police dynamic there as well. I mean, you know. Find me a 25-year-old who wants to come to work and talk to me as a police officer and not be on some urban police force with more excitement. I mean, it's not the most exciting place to work. If we start paying retention bonuses for the police department, what's to prevent uh, the other departments from asking? Well, well they, can, I mean, they can do exactly what the chief's doing, ask. Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't they? Well, I mean, uh, I mean, I can show you that there's very limited pool of people, and we're in the competition for. Yeah. This where is it? I mean, this is. I mean, I went on Indeed, and there's. You know. Yeah. That's what we're competing with. Well, it's everywhere, though. I mean, they don't have enough police officers in California, for Christ's sake. It's, it's not like it's specific to New Hampshire. This is um, Police App. Police App is a, isn't... Some of them are repetitive. Some of them are in there, too. But there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25... 26 on police app plus this one I want that's for entry-level jobs I mean and some of those are more than one and that's not including the state and stuff I mean it's that's yeah because the next I, I mean so we got a retention but then we got to send them through the Academy which is an additional expense we got to equip them which is an additional expense and we have no guarantees well we typically if we send somebody through the Academy we have a three-year commitment Right, but no way to enforce it. Yeah, there is. Wow. How, have you ever seen that money recollected? We've never done it, but others have. I know it's happened in uh, at least two towns. But, but, unfortunately, I know a lot of places are moving away from it just to try and get it more right. attractive to get people in.
I gotta beat the chief up as much as I could possibly do, and I'm not gonna beat him up anymore. My num my number is five hundred two thousand for next year. I think that's a reasonable request. I mean, currently he's. He's actually doing quite well with it. Yeah. That's because somebody left. <laughs> that's all right. Well, it's not all right because we. Well, I mean, I mean, no, your explanation is right. Yeah. All right, Chief, sorry. Right. But we got $104,000 and 310 with it uh, left because somebody left. But we're not going to be over budget this year. And had we kept that person, we would be pretty much right on schedule. That's so getting another one to replace that person that well left. Well I say one at the beginning because that would be six months at a minimum to get that one trained. Unless some other qualified person was willing to go for that salary out of I don't know that stuff game. I really I don't I don't know. I don't see the potential for us getting anyone personally, but I'd be really happy to get one. Well, there's 104,000 left, but um, we have a server on, that we're waiting to come in that's going to eat up at least 9,000 of that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, uniforms, like I explained last time, these have been lasting, but we didn't get any this year. I mean, I've got holes in this, like it's got to be replaced. Right. There's, there's going to be, uh, and then to hire somebody, as I did the spreadsheet, it's about, it's going to be seven or $8,000 for everything, depending on whether we get one or two. One, we have some stuff that we don't have to get. Two, we have to get some things we didn't have for the, you know, for example, you know, obviously some things aren't fitted, like the holster, as long as we have right. the holster still decent. With one officer, yeah, we have a holster. If we get two officers, now I got to buy a holster. So there's a few things in there that... That's potentially for next year, uh, with three weeks left, most likely for next year's budget, not this year's current budget. The server, yes, in this year's budget, right? Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. I, we didn't buy a whole lot this year because yeah. we didn't, in fact, we didn't buy any shirts or pants this year, maybe one pair. Yeah. But I mean, we're going to need them because we didn't buy them this year, that's right. my point. Well, and then to hire somebody new, that's why I right. went up on it. That's what, And that's what I, what I did is I put the new equipment is for the potential for two officers mm -hmm. and assuming they have to go to the academy and nothing fits them and everything has to be replaced that's so that's why i kind of split that uniform request out that way what the the uniforms are our replacement plus for hiring the fourth officer mm -hmm. the fifth and and the reason i put the sixth officer in december was because we need to have uniforms ordered and the academy's in January, right. so otherwise it'll put it in another six to seven months out before, uh, and it depends on how they schedule them. I mean, this year they've got a January and a February academy, but they mm -hmm. talked about closing one of them, so. Whatever. Okay. This put, it, obviously it depends on finding people too, but it puts us to have six, by the end of the summer of 2025 on the road because you have the four months of the academy three months of field training and right. and the, the pre-hire stuff that we have to do that's six including the chief yes okay so this budget that we're, we're creating is going to add one which gives us four and next year's budget of 225 is going to no. add one which no. gives us five no no this budget that I proposed yeah. gives us is for the four for the full year adding the fifth in in the summer okay. so they would go to the fall academy if you will and then hiring the sixth to go to the spring academy the 2025 early academy yes have them on at the end of the year it's basically buying their uniforms not really paying them for much of anything for time-wise, that's so. There's 
really this is for four and a half full-time equivalent, if you will, half being full-time for six months. Is how I, and I did that at the starting salary, which I put up to a little bit. 30. I put up to 30 versus from, right now we're technically around 26. So, so the previous year's budget, 2023, included a fourth person in the department. Right, yes. That remains unchanged. So I can go through the numbers I've come up with, but my number for that line is $270,000. It's more generous than mine. Okay. I mean, I, I kind of feel I know where the chief's headed. I just don't know if we can get there all in one year. I think that... Um I'm not sold yet on the uh, on the additional officer. Um, however, even if we are sold on it as a collective to selectman, um, I don't think we're going to get anybody. We, we we have to fill we have to fill the fourth uh, the third officer position first before we even. I did just get a resume from somebody. The other get the day. next person. Yeah, I think what the chief is saying is, is he can't hire anybody, and, and uh, honestly. Having sat here for a lot of years, he won't put any effort into this if he doesn't have any money to do it. Mm -hmm. So it is. I position. put effort into it all the time. Well, why would he? <laughs> he puts effort into it, but if there's no budget line item left, he's not going to work. And I, I wouldn't either if I were in this position. So what he's looking at is having funding for the possible fifth officer that he's looking for. And obviously, it can't be till the budget is passed in March to even start looking for that position anyways. Right, right. And that's why I figured the summer. So you currently have, can get your fourth officer with... And I've just got a resume last week that with came in. the so money that you've got... Promising? Going. I believe so. I haven't talked to this person, but I know somebody in his family and... Should be promising. Live in town? Nope. <coughs> I'm not going to get anybody in town. <laughs> They're all criminals. We're, we're, like me. We, we as a, we're one of the oldest communities in the state as a median age. So this, okay. I mean, there are some young enough, which, younger, but that's... Not to digress, but which should factor into your police officers per... Absolutely. Capita. I mean, we don't have any... We have one on-site on, on liquor license. I mean, I, I get it. Those factor into it, too. But we have six summer camps, which, although some, a lot of them aren't busy, we have been busy with one particular with some issues and, and this still ongoing to some degree. So um, we're, I'm sorry, Chief. Sorry, can no. I go through my math? Yeah, what did you come up with on your <clears throat> line? Um, leaving, the, leaving the chief salary yeah. alone because that's a separate line. Okay. On the officer's salary, I came up with uh, the sergeant at 89.065.60. Are you doing it individually? That's, I'm, I'm ex just explaining my okay. math. Yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, um, MPO, Ma Master Patrol Officer? Master Patrol Officer. Uh, 83, Patrol Officer, at 52 hours, uh, 52 weeks, excuse me, um, <coughs> my math comes to 63, And that's a $30.85 or what it was? I took, uh, I took the amount that he had listed. Yeah. They just did fifty-two weeks. Yeah, I just divided. Uh, I just divided his uh, his number by seventy-eight and multiplied it by fifty-two. Okay. And came up with sixty-three one ninety. Yeah. And <coughs> and I struck the thirty thousand retention. So, <coughs> so my ma my math is two fifty-two eight eighty-six. So we're a thousand dollars less than last year. Yeah. My math. So last year, I had hoped to add a part-time officer, that, so there was some extra in 2023, yeah. Yeah. and that didn't happen. That, okay, let's just walk through yours again. Mm -hmm. That is sergeant, master patrol officer, and one more officer? Not more. Uh, uh, fourth. The position that he already has. No, I know, but that's it's, it's, it's fully funded. Yes. Okay, so now we've got a fully funded four officer police department. Four person. A four person police department. department. Fully funded. Okay. And did you change the overtime at all? No. Okay. <clears throat> no, I did not. And you didn't 
change the overtime? I did not. Because I took the, un the uncall. I took seven thousand dollars out of that. So you brought it to ten. I brought it to eleven thousand. Eleven. So that's so we're ten thousand dollars apart on our wage scale. But I also reduced the fuel to twelve thousand dollars because. As I said earlier, people watch their own television. Fuel prices are going down. Right. And but we've only had three this year. Yeah, but you've only spent um, eighty-five hundred bucks. We still have another month. You can't spend fifteen thousand dollars a month on fuel. I don't have. To. Or, no, he's got eleven four. This eleven year. four. I'm sorry, one line up. <laughs> it's still a lot of money. So you're 85, you're going to spend 1500 bucks? We might no. spend 1000 Last month was over 1000 we well, got three weeks to go in December, and you got $2,848. I, I, I understand that, but that well, was for three officers. I know that. That's my calculation is based upon figuring four officers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So... I'm giving you an additional thousand dollars worth of fuel over and above what you've. I think we actually have two months left because we don't have the November invoice yet. I got a month to do the full November. My printout here. Let me double check. Printout you just gave me. You just gave me the spreadsheet on it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Right. I guess it depends on when you post the December, because that will come in January. So right. if you post, we didn't it, even talk about a cruiser yet. So if you're going to be putting on a fifth officer, I mean a fifth person, well, that was going to be a. That's the other thing that you're going to need a cruiser. That's the other issue that comes up. We'd have to be well event. So if we went to five round the clock, we could motor pool, leave them here, and not take them home, and that way people start when they, you know. Right. Get here. Get here and, and get a fifteen minute overlap and a turn over and go. Yeah. But well you gotta put so your stuff in the car right. to, the other person has to take their stuff out. There's about a I read a study one time where somebody figured it took about forty minutes to of but officer would, time to because you also have to check the car to it'd be a shift overlap for shift overlap and there's some time spent sure. taking your stuff out and the other person right. putting theirs in. And that's if you run three full shifts. You run three full shifts you can but yeah, the part with that is the cars are being used more, they're not going to last as long. How often, That's how, how often do you go out third shift between 11 and 7? Not very much, not very often at all. I mean, you'll see in my monthly reports, I put how many times we get called. Summertime, we get called out with some, depending on what happens, you know what I mean? We've had some weeks we had like five or six times. We've had officers called out twice in one night, and that's a, that's a kicker them the next day mm -hmm. sometimes sure. um, but the bigger part of it is for the call out it, I'm, I'm looking at do so I did talk with the sergeant about this he doesn't really mind being on call it's not that far away and it's a little extra money every week right he gets the non call time but the other problem I'm looking at is like this new applicant he doesn't live within I don't think he lives within 25 minutes of here and I don't know that he'll be able to find some place that he can afford Within 25 minutes of here, that's the other. That's certainly a concern. That's that's the other concern. We can, you know, he. That's that's the other part of it, right? Is is by having it, you can live wherever, but you got to be here on this at this time. It's different than you got to be able to respond to something in the middle of the night. Or I mean, there are other places in the county. No matter where you live, you can take call. It could, I mean, there was somebody that lived on let's say this side of the kank, if you will, and they, they've worked on what, this side of the kank someplace, but they lived on over in Littleton. And they took a call from there. I mean, apartments do that, you know, or they just flat out don't take it and let the sheriff and state police get called out in the middle of the night, which is, I don't know if that's a good idea either. It's not. Because they're, cause they're limited. They're not out either. No, I know. It's, it's not ideal. But that's, I mean, I'm trying to make it so that we have a bigger pool of applicants that could realistically come here. And yeah, we're not that busy. I'll, I'll admit it, we're not that busy at, from midnight to seven. 
but we do have some. And I know we had one call, in fact, it goes to court this week for, I think it's arraignment this week. No, it's, maybe it's trial. Anyway, it's one where they, uh, you know, it's a status, case status hearing. We're at 3.30 in the morning, someone was bashing the windows out of somebody's house. And that we got called out to it. There was somebody close by that responded. However, for that person that was having their windows bashed out by some with a baseball bat, it was still too long. You know what I mean? So, when seconds count, police are minutes away. Yeah. Well, I get it. <laughs> but I mean, that's what some people, some people in town worry about. That it's like mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're in that situation. So it's. You're right. I mean, eventually, either we have to have more cars or we go to hot seeking cars in a motor pool situation. We're not there at that point yet. And I wasn't viewing that this year as being an issue because I was looking at 2025 getting that person. I, I don't see us getting somebody certified unless we really jump so up some more. Did you get a total for your columns? <laughs> well, I did, but it was, it was based on... Um, just four people, not the additional person, and, right. uh, and no retention. And what was your number? 252 886. No, you oh, didn't do the bottom line. No, I didn't do the bottom line. Okay. And, and, I, and, and I didn't take out for fuel because if, he, if he's fully staffed, uh, he, could, he, could, he could come close to the 1440 that he's budgeted if he's fully staffed with four people. Because you gotta realize I'm the one who uses the least fuel, I don't live that far away. Right, right. right. Somebody else coming further with they, they I use less than the other two because I'm also here doing paperwork more than some of them. So I mean, yes, I added a third, if you will, to get me to that number, yeah. feeling that was. But I know I'm, I'm not the, the biggest user of gas in the department. I understand what you're saying about the, uh, the staffing. Um, I, just, I, I just I'm not ready to make that leap yet. The other thing with the uniforms was for body armor. All of our body armor runs out this year. Can we? Uh find a way to stagger that yeah that's just poor management no it's not poor management it's what it's happened a, no it isn't it is poor management if all can i equipment, explain uh, let me explain if all the equipment in one category goes bad in one year mm -hmm. that's poor purchasing it should have some stagger to it because you didn't hire everybody the same year did you no but that's not what happened okay we had body armor Mm -hmm. that was staggered to some degree and it was defective to the point where they revoked their certification for it and that happened at one point and we got some money from the back because mm -hmm. the company went bankrupt mm -hmm. I joined on to the thing so we got at least $900 back out of our 3000 that we paid for it but that's why it all went in one year how many years ago was that? Must have been 20 years ago. Well, 19. It lasts for five years. The body armor is good for five years? Yes. And you've had it for 20? No. We've replaced it on those cycles. Like five years. So we and it just worked out that when, I think it was when Gillis was hired, it was one of those cycle years. So, yes, she got hers months after we got ours but that's how it worked out it wasn't my fault the stuff was defective it was no, defective no, no, no. and it went out and it, they revoked the certification it. it wouldn't stop bullets they had two one officer killed and another one injured um i'd rather i, I would support buying um, a set of body armor early before it expired rather than trying to do it all at once Can you order some under this year's budget? I put that line item over, but you have money left in this year's budget. If he's got money left in this year's budget, I would, I would, I would support purchasing some this year. Okay. With this year's money. Okay. But that's just me. I, that's I, I, that's why I didn't answer anything. I, I defer to you three on that. This is how you want to do that. But that's why they run out in one year because you know, they're yeah. hit with that. Back in the past, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you, you wouldn't, to get them staggered properly, I mean, that'd be one every year, but you do have money. And, and if you gave up 
let's just say you gave up one that had another year left and put a brand new one on the officer to get that stagger in there. It's not necessarily a bad thing, or I guess it could just sit in the closet until the other one ran out. But that doesn't really stagger things as like it ought. It's a tough game to get this staggered in there, right? It's not it's easy. It's it, it all depends. Just, you know, that is what that made three of us on one cycle. And then right. it just turned out that the hiring of Gillis was the same year mm -hmm. as that. So we ended up with all of them. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking at we're going to need four next year. Because fill in the four. Well, on the other hand, ours run out. Are vests reusable? Or can you take, take them from person to person? No. They're fitted. No, they're fitted. They're fitted. And of course, female vests are different than men's vests. Totally different. And if they're not fitted, they're, they won't <clears throat> provide the right protection. I've seen this with the uh, fire departments replacing them. Some of them have actually staggered their SCBAs, but then they have to keep track of which one's what, and guys are going to fires, and uh, it, even though you have a small department, it's still another thing you've got to pay attention to. It takes it your attention well, I mean, away from more important It's items. not that I tried to buy them all in one year. It's no, just, it's, it happened. I, I don't have any problem with buying them all in one year. There's actually two officers that were injured. One one died because of the no. I'm, failed. Actually, I'm good with buying them all in one year. You know exactly what you got and when they have to be replaced. You don't have to juggle anything or try to remember who had what or look it up in a file. I'm fine with that. That's my opinion on buying the best. So you're at 253,000, Bob? Yeah. Okay. But, like I said, that's with no uh, no retention and uh, just four, mm -hmm. four people in the department. Did you take the 30 off down below or take it off the two? So you took it out of the 314? Right there. Yeah, yeah okay. I was just checking whether they did all the subtraction that a double 30,000 deduction on this. I was looking at this sheet, that's what I was wondering. <clears throat> this person that you uh, have an application for, is he already certified? No. So that's 511, 426 is what I've got in here. That's bringing the fuel back up to 14.4. <clears throat> Officer salary, 253, 472. And I've got holiday pay at 12,000. Uniforms at 8,000. Because I don't think we need the uniform on Fitz Cop. 12,000 for conference and training, 500 for radio, 15,000 for <clears throat> new equipment because I have no idea what the $30,000 is, 600 for crime. What did you have for new equipment? 15,000, which is 50% increase over last year. 2,000 for investigative supplies, 5,040 for telephone, 13,200 for office supplies, 360 and then $20,000 for maintenance. So that's still. Before you go too far on that, so if you're not going to have the fourth officer, a uh, fifth officer, you can take some out of the um, holidays too. Because that I calculated. Uh, eight holidays figuring they started at June 1st so take that I figured there'd be eight holidays for those <coughs> so you need to take that well, I, did, I did reduce that by $800 your two officers that you currently have have spent $8,000 on holidays so far this year and there's another one to come up so are they going to spend the 10 no no, no, I paid about the holidays. They're all so they're down. probably going to spend nine thousand dollars at the end. What it is is what it is right now. Okay. What it is is what it is. Yeah. 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 Well, cause, yeah. Because Christmas would come after the first of the year, right? Right. No, they get 20... paid X number of holidays in a lump sum. Unless you leave so before Christmas, you're not going to get it. It's twelve times eight. Yeah. Right. So 
if they've spent nine thousand or collected nine thousand dollars and you add an officer halfway through then you need to add another four thousand dollars so that's so you've got eight thousand dollars thirteen thousand i put twelve in this is holiday not overtime Feel free to continue for the moment, but I'm declaring a holiday for a quick bathroom break. Can you go through those numbers one more time, please? Thank you, I was going to ask. <laughs> So I come up with 10864 for holidays, taking the, the fifth officer out from June. Okay. So we have 10865 is what I, if, you, if you're if you removing that fifth officer, that's what it would come out to. So $11,000. Is that what you're removing? 11? Because that was a 12. I can take, are you? I'm fine with 12. If you're not paying the, for the fifth officer, you're not going to be paying him that position all it is. $11,000. Okay, so mine's 1000 Okay, are we ready? Yep. 119-351, Chief. Yeah. 253-472 officers. 24,503 officer system. 14-4 fuel. <coughs> $11,000 in overtime. Eleven thousand dollars in holiday pay. Eight thousand for uniforms. Twelve thousand for conference and training. Five hundred for radio. Fifteen thousand new equipment. Six hundred crime prevention. Two thousand investigative supplies. Five thousand forty telephone. 13 to office supplies, 360 postage, and $20,000 repair and maintenance. Did you have something on that, Chief? What? The repair and maintenance. You said you wanted to work something else like that. No, um, what did you put down? So, just so you know, 2022, we spent almost 12000 in overtime. That's with four officers. And that was with lower pay rates. Okay, right now, over to the more spent one. 85. 90. Nope, wrong. <coughs> 98. Right. I, I mean, I, re I reduced it. Whatever. So, it shouldn't the addition of an officer reduce the amount of overtime needed? You could split the amount in thirds rather than in halves that's my thought i yeah. mean i don't know if, it, if that's reality though oh so to some degree yes and to some degree no right because what happens right now um when the when this state and the sheriffs are covering if they get a call say this is where it kind of gets a little <coughs> you can't just go by the number of people if if we have a third officer on working the night, if you will. If we have that fourth officer working that night and they take a call at the end of the shift, they're gonna get overtime for that. Right now we're not seeing some of that. Right. So it's kind of, you know, it's not just a, it's not a straight linear thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. And like what's gonna happen is we're gonna have an officer riding with another officer while they go through field training for part of the year. And if they end up with something that kicks into overtime, you're not paying one for overtime, you're paying for two now because you know, if you make an arrest near the end of your shift or something, or you right. go to a domestic and it takes a while, the two officers are tied up there. So it's not a straight linear thing. Now I did, I, I, this 18, 691 was based upon having the fifth. So I, I, I know that that's higher than it. No, going through the calculator, I couldn't get it but i think it's going to be i i think it's going to be more than eleven thousand. but it won't okay. be the 18 690. what do we have for a total on that did you total that stuff up 
And I'm working on that now. Oh, I thought it came in. I did. I got 510-436. Okay, 510-436. And in order to stay within a reasonable rate of increase, we've got an <clears throat> upper window in my calculation of 525000 So you have $15,000 worth of money there. What did you calculate for uniforms? So would you come up with Cammy? I um, did. Got five ten four thirty six. I got four twenty six. Okay, then I screwed up writing down the officers. I was off by ten. Okay, so four ninety one ten I think she's going to use more overtime. I'm okay with that because. Okay. Uh, well, I don't think it'll be the 1891, <coughs> though. No, but uh, you want to see it at what? 12? Yeah, I'd like to see 12 there. Yeah. Well, you got. Okay. I'm okay with that. I can do 12, yeah. So it's plus 1,000. Seems reasonable. Right. Overtime. So 511, 426. Yep. And what. Well, okay, where does the body armor come in here? That's in the uniforms. Okay. So that line needs to be adjusted as well. Well, we've already taken it from fourteen five to eight thousand. Yeah. I think we need to go back to ten. Well, not if he's gonna be buying a jacket this year with this year's money. Well, all I'm saying is right now we're sitting on a five percent increase year to year to year. And Overall, I mean, just to be a prep, we're running about 6% on the total budget that we're running currently before the budget committee. So rather than beat the devil out of our police chief, we do have a little bit of room here that we can make it easier. I mean, I would, I, yeah, that's my only point. I'll make my other point when we're done. Body armor, eleven hundred dollars for a vest. Is that what I'm seeing? That was the I, the way the contract is written with the state that we can get on. It just says a percentage off retail, and you can't look at that up easily. But I, that was from another state, but contract, mm -hmm. which sounds about right. I, I obviously I'll shop around that and meets the standards. But hardly we spent any money in your uniform budget this year. It's because we didn't replace anything, like I said. We, right, you know, right. So maybe a maybe shirt you, costs 175 bucks. Maybe you need to plug somebody in for an armor measurement. We can, for, we can work on that. Yes, yeah, so we can. Well, well maybe least, two. Maybe you can buy two this year. We yeah. can encumber yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so that would give us a little bit of leeway. Well, that would help. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would make a motion to let the chief uh, purchase body armor for up to two officers under the 2023 budget. I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll, I'll second, although I'd rather wait until you have a, a number. But I'll second for the... Well, he has numbers <laughs> here. Look, um, approximately $1,100 each. Yeah, but there's a certain amount of guests going on. You'll have a number before you encumber it. You'll yeah. Yes. I need, a, I need a quote or something before right. I can yes. encumber it. Right. Right. Any further discussion on that? A commitment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Go for it. So there's two commitments. And we'll have to see. That could change that. Yeah, when he gets his final pricing, it might change. But let's take a look anyway. But that'll, um, that, that's going to back off your number approximately $2,000. <laughs> that's or not going to increase it. He's talking about increasing it. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> lost <laughs> ups and downs. So I, think, kind of... I think the the five ten is a good number, but I think five twenty is a good number as well. I think that's a reasonable increase year to year, and we do need to give him as much as I beat him up. We do need to give him a little latitude on his his program that he's trying to institute, and we have no idea what his repairs are going to cost. So I'm going to cut that. Those have been a little. So, so we've got a solid number of 511, oh, excuse 10. me, 512, 426. Oh, we added two grand. We added $1,000. I had 511, 426. That's 510, 436. So we're leaving uniforms at eight? For 
for now, we don't know because we don't know what he might be able to get for. Right. I think he do because if if he is lucky enough to get somebody in November or whatever to go to the new academy, then we're still gonna have to outfit him. Well, I was thinking about the no, advice for best. We don't know what he's gonna be able to get for best. Oh, I know, but I, I I I can't yeah. see reducing next year's number. Oh, I don't want to. I think we find where it's at. Position that we're going to right where we did this year. Cam, you came up with 510, 426, 436. Not, so if we're, if over t time is 12. I'm going to do this math again. Okay. Did, did we have overtime at 12? Yeah. We did. Yes. What did we leave uniforms at 8? Eight? 8. 8. Then we should be at 512, 426. And while we're waiting for Bob to run through the map, I would let, rather take $30,000 in new housing assistance than I would give it as a bonus. The problem do with doing it as like a sign-on and doing it like you're saying mm -hmm. is that's kind of a, why I'm proposing giving it across like the state did is it's kind of a kick to the people who've been here for committed to you for a long time. Yeah. That they're not getting but somebody new walking in. I'm just, that's my thought on that. Well, you couldn't do it any other way, Chief. I mean, we have to give the people that are here the same benefit that we're giving somebody that was walking through the door. I mean, so it has to be. That's actually not true. Well, it is for this particular <laughs> item, but there are other <laughs> items that, for example, like compensation, in compensation, that we right, can do. Right, change. you can negotiate wages and all the rest right. of it. But if you get bonusing for retention, right? I mean, you're just going to lose people if you don't do it across the board. Sure. Five eleven. That's what. Four twenty six. That's what I was thinking. If you have a problem with getting to be, people to live in Tufton Road, then let's talk about plugging thirty thousand dollars into a housing assistance program to get them someplace they can be here, which isn't going to bankrupt them. Just a thought. Uh, you do that for one. You got to do it for the fire department. <laughs> For new hires, yeah. Sounds quite socialist to me. <laughs> What's the difference between giving them cash? I, I don't want to give them anything. <laughs> All right. That's the difference. Yeah. Well, we had a budget number, a bottom line number that Bob has come up with again. 511, 426. So moved. I'll second. Is there any other discussion? Feel free. You. Yeah, I mean, I, there's so much spread between the chief's budget and our budget that I think we might have a problem or a, a longer discussion at the budget committee. What? Well, it's largely the fifth officer. I mean, that's the... That's the kicker right there. That's the yeah. kicker. And, and preparing for the six is what's in there too right hiring them at the end of the year so you'd have to explain that to the budget committee that's what the difference is right i'm i'm fine Jim. all right all in favor of uh, approving this budget at uh five hundred eleven thousand four hundred and twenty six dollars aye. aye aye thank you chief i guess i guess it's, uh, it's a tough one on here, I know. And I will go on record and state that, and everybody knows that I'm Captain Obvious, but police work is totally unpredictable. You have no idea what's going to happen today or tomorrow or in the future. And, it, and I mean, it's it's like the highway department and the storm problem that we have. Yep. You use $100,000 over budget. And I know you don't believe me when I say it, but if you find a candidate that fits the bill, even if you don't have 100% of the funding, you can usually find the money. I know you have an issue with the fact that if it's not voted on as a new employee at town meeting, then you don't have that opportunity. But you're going to have the opportunity, whatever, of having not only filling the, the fourth position, but filling the fifth position in this budget. No, you took it out. No. 
you can still do it. So you want me to if, advertise for a position? Absolutely. If without you, the money approved to do you it. You have the money approved because you're not going to fill this first position before March. I might. Because this person, like I said, I got a resume okay, right now. Let's assume for a moment that I'm right and you're wrong. And you don't fill the position. Has he gone through the academy? No. Okay. So you, you've got a partial employee. The academy doesn't start until June, I think, or July. So let's give us five months worth of no fourth and fourth office. Well, you have to pay him at the academy. No, I know. There's probably a period of time between now and then which we aren't going to pay him. Let's give it two months. It probably, it, it, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I got it. Okay, I got now it. you got November and December next year. You can fill it. I mean, you're not without funding if, if a candidate comes up. Well, it, it's going to take some time to go through the process right. to hire them. And Obviously, we're talking I got a resume. About, that's it. And let's say you hire this person and he comes on board in July. Oh, no, I'd probably be, I, I don't think he would stick around that long. Maybe June? Yeah. Uh, I don't know that he'll stick around that long. You know, there's other places, you know what I mean? That's, I had another opportunity and the person went to Guilford yeah. before they even, their resume got to me. So if I don't get back to this person and start the process yeah. and get going, have them on board within a, probably a month or two, they'll have, they probably have, they may have offers out other places. Yeah, but what about the academy? The academy may not start, it shouldn't start until probably April, May. So how long, how do we, uh, we pin? What we've done in the past is we've done some of our field training right. at the academy. Some places do like a, like a pre, get some of that out of the way so then save it on the far end. The so he'd be right around until he completed the academy. Absolutely, you can't, you can't do anything but if you're not certified. Right. That's the requirements <clears throat> in the land. But practicing shooting and things like that. They but they'll be also be doing their field training, learning the roads of the town, learning, seeing how to do some right. of the paper. They can do some of the paperwork, the department. but they can't be alone. Make, to make a decision. So you're gonna have a few months of unpaid. It's probably gonna be a month or two of unpaid. Right. But I wouldn't want to wait till the next academy starts right. because somebody else could. Well, so like two says, come come towards the end of the year, and October, brings, November, to see see where your budget is. You could hire that that person at the end of the year. Brings back to mind the shot we had when we were recessed that we need to work on that. Um, Contingency line. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we had fifty thousand dollars on the contingency line, we could sit here with absolute certainty and say hire another officer. You know, we right. can afford it. But we only have five thousand dollars there currently. So we, after town meeting, we might be in a much better position to help the chief. Yeah, well, I should after, say. Yeah. After the budget hearing, actually. Right. Yeah. True. Okay. Let's keep our fingers crossed. See what happens. Great fun. Yeah. I hope the rest of your day is smooth, Chief. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on to signature file. We have a holiday schedule, proposed holiday schedule, which we've all seen, I believe. For both, it, yeah. for both the transfer station and the town offices. And I'm ready to call for a vote. Is uh, just before we do that. Are you com confident that we don't have to revisit the fire department budget given this holiday schedule? <laughs> Why would we? I'm surprised the holiday line was left in on the budget you just reviewed, so. Okay. I think the budget committee is going to review that line on both budgets now. Okay. All right. So um, we have the proposed I'll, I'll schedule. Well, you already voted on it last meeting. Oh, we didn't vote. Yeah, yes. didn't so we just copy. need to sign it mm -hmm. and the date approved. Good. Uh. 
Then we have the same one for the same one with the minor adjustments for the transfer station, which we approved. Item three, we have a letter from a couple named Styles that I'm going to read. I think it's all right to do that. Recently, when we received our tax bill and we found out that the previous owner of 46 Dam Road had not paid the taxes, we never received a bill as it was sent to the previous owner. In the meantime, interest rates occurred. We did pay the tax collector the amount of $1,380 for the first bill. We did not pay the interest, which equaled $42.28. We are requesting to have the interest fee waived as we were unaware that the previous owner hadn't paid. That sounds like a reasonable request. I think so as well. So moved. I second. Any discussion? I, I just a faulty title search. They should probably, their attorney should do that, but I'll... Let them argue with the attorney about it. Okay. All right, so uh, Cammie, mm -hmm. would you advise the tax collector that will waive those interest fees, please? Mm -hmm. Wanting right into correspondence. We have a letter from Chief Thompson, our fire chief, describing some damage that was done to the overhead doors at Central Station with an estimate of $2,435 for repairs, and they should be making those repairs tomorrow. He's been in contact with Primex, and we know we have a $1,000 deductible. If we don't want to make an insurance claim and pay the repairs from the building maintenance budget, we should let him know as soon as possible. It's up to decide what, what we want. We have insurance. We have insurance. Yeah. So we do want to go through the insurance company. I say take the claim and pay the deductible. I make the motion. Uh, Bob just made the motion. I'm sorry. I I'll second it. Motion, sure. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Audrey, if you would please let the chief know that we'll go through the insurance company. Okay. Now we're on to town administrator and select his updates. Chip and I did some updating. Well, Bob was gone, but we could quickly review that since I had nothing. <laughs> Chip had, had some poor information. Uh, not much. Not Just much. Some charts with. Why don't we have the town administrator come up? Mm -hmm. Give us her observations and etc. and concerns. I'm going to need some assistance with the municipal buildings budget. Yes, you are. So, I don't know if you want to do it as a group or if someone wants to come in and just say, outside maintenance, another hundred. Yeah, you know, Jack usually. He gave me a few numbers. Does not. He gave me two numbers. You want me to ask Jack for more help? I'm and then the fire chief has some Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Please. All right. I gave you wording for the holiday schedules. That's for the personnel policy, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So. So we have the original one. It will prevent the confusion on the holiday lines in next year's budget. So we have our changes, and we have your recommendation. Right. So as Bob Bob requested, what did you all talk about back in July, and then what did we talk about the last meeting? So what you just signed for the holiday schedule allowed the floating holiday to be taken by the employee as they decided, um, approved by the supervisor. And it took out paying the police officers and the fire officers um, personnel all of the holiday in one lump sum. I did make a little changing to the wording um, so the hours paid for recognized holidays can 
compared to starting off with pay, because we're talking about hours, not pay. Mm -hmm. So it was just some word smithing. Didn't really change the content. Okay. We have to vote to adopt one of these or the other, eh? Or build it in um, which one you want to, or a combination, um, what you want to build into the policy that Cammie's working on. Yeah, so. I, guess, not, I guess your method is you vote on each piece as you go along. I'm, I'm, not, I'm looking at uh, in, under the town administrator recommendation in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Salaried employee is required to work by circumstances beyond their control, etc., on the holiday. That individual will be paid at an hourly rate based on the rate approved by the legislative body. Okay. An hourly employee is required by circumstances to work on a holiday. That individual will be paid time and a half their hourly salary rate. But that ends up being two and a half times their salary because they have that hour of holiday pay plus another time, an hour and a half of so, overtime which, or whatever you want to call it, which is not... Beyond this, beyond circumstances beyond their control, I picture um, there was a five alarm fire in Wakefield last mm -hmm. week. Yep. So they're all going out for that. It's beyond their control. They have something major they're dealing with. I understand. It's that. not going to the office to do some administrative work. Right, but this is on a, we'll say this is going to happen on a holiday. Right. So if they received their day's holiday pay plus the regular salary they would get right, if they're working, half, that would right. be double time. If you if you do time and a half on top of it, it's two and a half times. So you can change that to one point zero. That's excessive, yes. Okay. I did look at what a couple other towns did. Up at the county, we typically give time and a half on Thanksgiving and Christmas. If they get called in for circumstances. No, if they. No, that's their holiday pay. No. If they, if they're scheduled, if they work for whatever reason, even if they're scheduled, and they end up working on Thanksgiving and Christmas. They get time and a half automatically. Plus holiday. Plus holiday. Right, which is and that's at straight time. But those are the only two, two days. So no, two no, and a half no other holidays are paid at uh, a time and a half. I would institute the sheet that says the uh, board of selectmen changes. I'm fully in favor of what we what we had suggested already, and it doesn't require any more changes to the personnel policy, which we need to get done, approved, dated, and in the people's hands before the first of the year, which is going to be very difficult. One that says BOS changes. Yeah. Not uh, administration. Exactly. We did just on uh, approving the holiday schedule change the um, floating holiday. Right. By the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes out Juneteenth. So the holiday schedule you approved on you know, the BOS one, mm -hmm. my changes include taking out Juneteenth, mm -hmm. letting the supervisors approve the floating holiday. Chairman is suggesting no time and a half for any any holidays. Right. Any. Any. Okay. At one point now. Because it those hours work will end up being double time. Mm -hmm. If we did time and a half, it'd be two and a half times. Is 
that a motion? Yes, it is. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion is to stay with the BOS changes? Yep. Yes. Yes. I have a meeting at South 30 today with Voya to understand the Voya cards that are issued to employees and how to do that. I'm working with Health Trust on reviewing health insurance and that will all build into the personnel cost budget. I still have yet to delve into the finance budget and all those actuals and it's over. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, we have an 11 o'clock meeting for the solar. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the, there's a couple things. I don't know if I need to talk to the, uh, the treasurer to get the audit finalized. We don't have the final audit yet. So those are on the forefront of my list to do. Any questions? You don't know the meaning of life. We're all set. <laughs> Thank you, Audrey. So, we're not going to have enough public. He declined to show up. I'm disappointed because it was important. We can have a, non, a quick non-public. I'd like to. I'd like to go into non-public for uh, landing on aid concerning personnel. Again, can't remember the numbers. All those in favor? Pike guy. Maria. All the aye. You're on. All right, I make a motion to seal the minutes of that non-public. Second. Any other business we'd like to discuss? Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get a vote anymore. <laughs> don't you normally say how long you want to seal them for? Six months, a year? We would never have that. I know. No, um, we review them. How often, though? Uh, oh. At least, at least, least yearly. Yeah, we used to do it every six months, or it's kind of fallen into a yearly pattern. Well, Actually, we don't do an awful lot of... There and, is and occasionally, we've unsealed the minutes within a couple of weeks if something, you know, when they come up for us to vote on. But once they, we announce the hire of a person, we can unseal the minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. just an observation yeah. of mine. Right, yeah. And uh, there, is, there is more business we need to discuss, and that's Warren Articles. Chip has a a quick list if you just want to run through it to bring Bob up to speed yes. and we may add to that in some way or other but it's good that Bob is on, on track with us to know what's going on I think yeah. and I believe we meet with CIP in the budget committee tomorrow night for the CIP yeah. presentation the gala so, CIP presentation is oh, it is it oh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just had a message from the budget chairman um, that he wants to cancel it. Because he wants to get tomorrow night, so I don't know what's going on yet. Oh Lord. Well, I would support that because I have a commitment tomorrow night. Left me a voicemail. Yeah. I mean, See, he's going to cancel the budget. The budget committee chairman. The last one. I thought we were meeting until the CIP meeting. That was supposed to be a joint meeting. I thought. Yeah. Is that Wednesday? I thought it was tomorrow night also, but I have a me message. I haven't called Rob back to find out who wants. Please, uh, when you find out, at least in my case, would you call me? Yes. Because when I'm at work all day long, I don't have email. And uh, I'd like to know ahead of time. Thank you. Okay. Quickly. Just to review. 2022 more article totals 1,022,125. 2023 war, <clears throat> the total 1 million what? 22,125. The 2023 war, 
was a total of 1,235,130. Those are gross totals, because out of that came 287 out of the uh, undesignated fund balance. So that's 1,235,000. So if we were to go to 475 for highway paving, 175 for neighborhood paving, $200,000 for the fire truck, capital reserve, $50,000 for the police cruiser, $85,000 to match the federal grant money on Canaan Road, $225,000 for the town shed, $50,000 for the uh, Carlton property, and yeah, that's a million two hundred sixty thousand dollars. That puts us on par with last year, right? So my response to Rob Warriston's question about financing with solar was let's self finance because it's the only Warren article that I've ever seen come through that's actually going to generate revenue. So it's going to generate revenue back into the um, revenue side of the budget. So I'm saying 350 out of the fund balance for the solar. But I didn't add the hundred thousand dollars for the uh, near lake. So that's these are just rough figures, but obviously. And the 225, I think, is rich because we took the 40 out of it. Is there anything else you're looking at? No. Okay. So, if, if the, uh, well, I can do the math, but we're less than 5% over last year. <coughs> if the budget committee wanted to entertain the idea of increasing that contingency fund, let's say the 50,000. Right. Wait. Or if you want to put twenty thousand dollars into um, Dennis's Central Park project just to get him somewhere, I mean, he needs a lot more organization before we can. Yeah, he's going to be looking for a number. He's going to be looking for probably twenty thousand dollars to do that. Okay. To get that out there, plant the seed. Yeah, yeah. To get the design done. He doesn't understand. You got to get the design done and get a contract. No, it's got to be fully vetted before you can put the amount out there to the. Yeah, but you can't people. do a more article without a uh, guess. Right. Well, on that note, you spoke of Parks and Rec, and I've been informed that our town administrator has been in touch with the Wolfboro Parks and Rec department. Uh huh. And uh, I believe the, at least the initial response from them was the numbers they gave us are an educated guess. <laughs> now, have you had any further correspondence with anyone down there? I have not. I can either go to the selectmen or to the town manager. What do you recommend? We have sent correspondence to the selectmen, I believe, in the past and, and got crickets. I would try the town manager, okay. but our next meeting, which I believe will be the 26th, mm -hmm. Tuesday the 26th, mm -hmm. we're going to have to decide if we're going to pay the town of Wolfboro, what we're going to pay the town of Wolfboro, and do we go forward with an agreement, which apparently, according to what Audrey could find, was somehow come up with in 1994, but no one has any records of it. Well. So that's something to think about between now and Christmas and Right. So uh, we're, we're not meeting again until the 26th. We, we could if we, if we felt the need. Uh, but I mean, we're we not have going to do to our encumbrances at some point in time. So that would be over 26th, I would think. We could uh, encumber anything. Yeah. Um, so that's something we got to think about. Um, yeah. I mean, we have our Parks and Rec recommendation, which is about three grand lower than than Wolfboro's request. But apparently, they cannot. They change computer programs or something. They have no record of the fact that any agreement was ever agreed to. They don't have any record of Slickman's minutes going back to 1994. Well, I, I don't know that it wasn't digitized. I'm sure in '94. 
So it's going to have to be somebody going through the process. Somebody's going to have to manually research that. Yeah. I mean, I, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we, we're going to have to come up with an agreement. Or so we'll vote on an agreement. We're going to have to do something. Yeah. So, anyway, that's what we're, Audrey was able to find out. Basically, not much. So, the, the, two, the two questions Audrey needs to get answered are how much money do they want and oh. how are we going to go forward? Because we don't have a copy of any agreement. So, what, are, what is their expectation going forward going to be? Because we don't have this argument every year. No. Right? I mean, you don't care because you're going to be here. But well, I care because I'm a taxpayer. You know? the rest of them. <laughs> you don't have to argue with them. I will if you'd like me to. You can I'll, reach out, I'll reach out to the town manager and see if I can get yeah. a meeting. Yeah, just see if we can come up with some sort of... Because there's a, I think there's as much motivation on the positive end as the negative end. So we need to reconcile that somehow. I think we all want to have an agreement with Fisborough. We just need to know what that is. It needs to be defined. we got to get right. it in writing. Yeah. Um, and, and live by it. We're right, now, it's, right now it's just arbitrary and that's that's what yeah, I'm struggling yeah, we need, with. We need an accurate accounting of what's going on. Right. To say, well, we, you got about this, give us this amount of money. Uh, it's not good business practice. No. 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 All right. I got to move that we adjourn. I'll second that. Well, you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye.